What's up, everybody? Going to give you guys this review for Love and Hip Hop Hollywood Reunion. So episodes 15 and 16. Let's combine them together. Try to run through this as quick as possible because a lot of shit, like, really, you know, didn't happen. So it started off with Alexis and uh, Masika. So, you know, Alexis is pregnant and, you know, she was like, going, fuck it. She says Fetty is the father. And um, what's the girl, uh, fuck, what's the host name? Uh, Nina, Nina. She was just like, okay, well, it hasn't been confirmed just yet. Shady as fuck. But I think a lot of people on the stage know not ready to come for her. The only person that did that was uh, Jocelyn. She's not on the show, but it's not because of that. But that's the only person that has tried her. Um, <clears throat> Let me see. Masika says that the whole reason for the beef is because all there were other people that were dealing with Fetty, baby mamas included, they were all pregnant around the same time that she was. But Alessis never went after them. She went after her because she has a platform and has been doing everything she can to pretty much be in the spotlight. So that's the whole reason of her saying she's out of making bitches famous. And it's one of those where, you know, I can understand that. And I wish, and you know what, I, I don't even want to say wish, because chances are she probably said it during the season, but of course I think we all know how production is. Certain shit is going to be edited out to further push the storyline. Now, one thing Alexis did say in, in the event that Fetty is the baby daddy, she was like, you know, Pretty much saying act right and I might let our kids have a play date. One thing I will say is, a true fact is, their, their children are going to be siblings. But see, this is one of those where it's just like, it's kind of fucked up that, you know, <clears throat> you're willing to use your child as a pawn to sit here and taunt another person. You know, and this is like, how foolish is it of you to sit here and be mad at this dude for fucking around with her while you were together. Yeah, you go back to the same motherfucking dude and then get knocked up. I ain't even fucking touch it. I'm not moving on. So then all of a sudden, um, Alexis is saying, Hey, Zell, tell them about Xanax and Plan B now. A lot of people going in on how good or bad of a friend he is for that. Here's what I'm going to say. Because I've said this <clears throat> many a times and I still stand by this. I am loyal as fuck. I'm a damn good friend. But I can be petty. But I'm savage than a motherfucker. And I let anybody know. I've let people. like When I start investing into a relationship with people, I let them know all for it. Just like... If this shit don't work out and we decide that we ain't finna be cool or whatnot, that's fine. Do me a solid. Don't try and spray me. Because at that point, if you do that, you might be lucky to get a warning. Like, you might want to calm the fuck down. Might be lucky. Because you're probably not. And I'm probably finna come out guns a blazing. And is it right to sit here and tell business and confidence? It definitely is not. But all is fair in love and war. So my whole thing is, as long as you <clears throat> keep me out your mouth, we good. We good, shit. I fell out with, we really wasn't friends. I was actually friends with her dude, and by virtue of being cool with him, that, you know, that kind of friendship was extended to her. She ran her mouth for some shit and kind of stifled my damn career and whatnot. And Smooth was just like, you know what, I ain't fucking with you. And when it looked like she was about ready to run her mouth, it was like, I had let know, like, let's be clear. I know more about your personal life than you know about mine. So you not already fucked my career up at this point. I'm back on track now. So unless you want me to sit here and tell the shit that I know that can damage and destroy your fucking career, you might want to calm the fuck down. <clears throat> and we was on the point. And the main reason that I didn't pull the trigger is because and me going off and telling all her business is going to affect him. And that's my dude, so I ain't finna do him like that. Call me what you want. But that's how the fuck I feel. Now, in the way this whole thing played out, you know, Masika did say, I, I went to bed, your friend woke up your enemy. And because I may be getting, 
I am kind of getting out of it. Fuck, I'm just go ahead and cover this now. But this happened later. But the whole that whole going sleepy friend waking up your enemy. I don't know. Like we don't know the entire timeline how shit happened, but we can say that Masika did go in on him. <clears throat> Doesn't make it right, no. But again, I mean, if he felt slighted, I mean, hey, this what it is. You want to hurt me? I'm hurt. You hurt people. Hurt people. I mean, that's just my stance on it. But when it, like I said, but when it comes to friendships and whatnot and relationships, hey, it's one of those where y'all can fall out. And even if it was bad, you don't have to go around spreading it. But real talk, this shit get back to me. Fuck it. We finna be petty. Let's be petty. Sorry. <clears throat> so the whole Z so the whole Xanus to plan B getting back to that, that must have meant something. And hey, he putting it out there and then of course, hey, everything is to hurt Masiga, so you got Haley doing the whole Xanax, Xanax thing. We don't know how that triggered Moniz, but that triggered Moniz and pretty much they were about to go at it. Hazel, we got escorted and pretty much kicked out, which I was mad about because there were a lot of other storylines that involve her that is fucked up that we never got a chance to visit it because they kicked her out. So it is what it is. And when you just like, well, she mad because I said that her boyfriend looks 12 and 75 at the same time wrapped up in a one. She ran up. She missed. So I guess it was like one of those false swipes and also the shit. And, you know, Hazel keeps saying on site, on site. And I kind of feel bad for it because, okay, you like a motherfucker can go catch you outside of tape. And that, I don't fucking know, man. <clears throat> but before we move on, y'all let me know <clears throat> how y'all feel about the whole Zella Masika thing. And let me know if I'm wrong. If how the fuck I feel, you know. Because I actually did have a friend tell me that, when you know friends should never tell shit even going back to the whole candy and um fate your thing i'm sorry you start sitting here trying to come for me it is what the fuck it is all fair and love and war ad monice and tiffany um so i think ad was trying to redeem herself and i don't know if her is the wrong pronoun to use if it is my bad but I believe she's trying to redeem herself from um, what happened this past season. I think in watching shit back, because again, the reunion is for redemption and shit. And it seemed like she was going hard, but it seemed like Tiffany was even going more harder. And it's one of those where, you know, <laughs> Monique just sat back and AD was just like, you know, how the fuck am I going to sit here and, you know, take advice from you when you have failed relationships, you got five dudes tattooed on your arm and whatnot. And <clears throat> honestly, that's another one of those where I can't even say, I, AD was fouled for that. And I think that's part of the reason, because it was like, damn, like how dare you sit here and tell my business like that. But <clears throat> AD has been fouled from jump. Because, again, sitting here telling information, you know, between friend and, you know, girlfriend, it, she's just messy. And at the very end, because I'm just going to skip all through the bullshit, you know, <clears throat> Tiffany said, I'm going to see you back in L.A. Ray J and Princess, <clears throat> one shit there. Keisha and Booby, the only thing I want to talk about. <laughs> Is I think uh, Keisha was saying something about him and marriage. Oh no, I think Booby said something, whatever. And Brooke was just like, no, no, like he wants, to, like he's not happily single. He is a southern man, want to be married. And Keisha Cole turned to the side, and I swear all that that she was doing, like I was picturing Shenanigans, what Shenanigans be doing. <laughs> like I was cracking the fuck up when I saw that shit. Fucking hilarious. Uh, Bridget Kelly. I put try okay, so the whole trying to work it out thing between her and James. First and foremost, I can't like <clears throat> when Brooke brought it to all of our attention that she took James from his wife. <clears throat> I don't feel no kind of ways for you know James being cheated on multiple, multiple, multiple times. I mean, hey, bro, that was that was karma. That was karma. But it was this big ass argument about working it out and how 
because I think I might even be skipping ahead in my notes because y'all know normally I I think I am but if I am I just won't talk about it when I get to the point but <clears throat> of course Nina has to you know go off for the girls like why is that you know when dudes she's they're supposed to be forgiven this and third and I'm gonna say this a lot of the times if a dude cheats regardless of what the fuck happened Females, correct me if I'm wrong, y'all never fucking forget. Which there's nothing wrong with that. You can forgive and not forget. <clears throat> but a lot of times that shit is like, like it never goes away. It's always surface level shit. If y'all go back to that Nicki Minaj song, You See Right Through Me, I hate that song. Because it's like, in, I think it's like the second verse or whatever, she's arguing with him and don't want to let up, and then like turn right back around, like, okay, you're right, just let it go. And females do that shit all the time, where what's good for the goose ain't good for the gander. <clears throat> so it's one of those where, then work it out, man, fuck it, let it go. Ray J with the boy band shit, all I'm gonna say is this. Uh, what's that boy name? Boog what now? So I don't even feel like talking about it. Zell and Ray, so, okay, no, no, it was a different loyalty thing, but kind of the same thing. So the whole, you know, going to sleep before and waking up your enemy, you know, it's one of those where Zell was saying with his relationship with Masika, you know, if she didn't like somebody, he didn't like that person. And um, Nina was like, so if that's the case, why can't you understand why Ray didn't like you? And <clears throat> from the um, Hollywood Unlocked that he did with Jason Lee to kind of try to sum it up as quickly as I can. I don't know if it was a dude that he was fucking with or a friend that he had, but it was just like, you know, Zell did him, you know, so fucking grimy or whatnot. So just based off that, what he heard is like, you know what? I don't even want to deal with a person of this caliber if this is true. <clears throat> so just off of that, he blocked him off of Instagram. Just like, so when Zell went to look at his page and saw like, damn, I'm blocked. I don't even know this dude like that. And that's kind of where everything fucking ensued. So <clears throat> then the fast shaming thing came up. And, you know, Nina was in her feelings. She was in her bag because, okay, that, you know, y'all laughing in this, that, and the third. Okay, yeah, we got it. You a big bitch. But it's one of those where it's just like, you as a host need to remain neutral. And you can't sit here and be mad at somebody for fast shaming. But you're not mad because somebody else is on stage and they arguing about some other shit or going off about some other shit. All because it doesn't apply to you. So kind of get out your bag. So, you know, Neil's like, okay, well, let's call a truce. And then you had Lyrica saying, why don't you, to Andazel, why don't you get up and give him a hug? Now, Ray looking like a truce, hug. And even he was like, okay, well, I don't really think there's a need for that in terms of her. And you had security right behind Zell. And now let Zell tell it <clears throat> on his, uh, I think it was IG Live that he did, is that he went up to embrace him, saw Ray kind of, you know, lean back like, no, I don't want, and that provoked him to windmill him, because that was the fucking windmill that we saw. And it's one of those where... I mean, Zell was the breakout star, but you just fucked yourself up by sitting here putting your hands on somebody. And that was very stupid, but it's what it is, you know. And I mean, I kind of feel how Ray is shit. We could be cordial, but I don't have to get up and touch you, hug you, shake your hand. We ain't got to do none of that shit. We can coexist by you staying the fuck over there and I stay the fuck over here. <clears throat> okay, so everybody's mad <clears throat> that it's part two of the reunion. <clears throat> Excuse me. Everybody's mad about the whole sneak. Like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, look. Right, let, let, let's be real. Like, for the motherfuckers from the hood and the ghetto, we ain't finna sit here and that. Like, motherfuckers don't get snuck all the motherfucking time. So let's, so let's not even pretend like that shit don't happen. Number one. Number two, the same motherfuckers. Not necessarily on the show, but the same motherfuckers talking about some. Oh, that's sweet. That's this, that's that. <clears throat> The same motherfuckers that went up for Jessica Dime who did the same motherfucking thing where she got up, pretend like with old with the fucking thought, whatever, got up pretending that she was finna go after um 
uh, what's, what's the girl name? Kurt wife, Rashida, and Beeline, and went over there and, you know, snatched up old girl. That was a fucking sneak. Because she wasn't fucking expected. So you so I mean it's one of the way you can't go up for Jessica Dime doing this shit and it be okay. But then it's not okay when fucking Ray do it. I got it, yeah. You know, you wanna see him get at a motherfucker square up. It is what it is. But hey, he took the opportunity to get at this motherfucker. You feel what I'm saying? Now, I did watch Rock's video <clears throat> and Rock says it all the time. Shit, I say it and I stand by it. Shit, when you stay ready, you never gotta get ready. Point blank in a motherfucking period. It's like that. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, of course, <clears throat> in terms of just how <clears throat> things go, you never let a motherfucker have the dominant fucking stance. So even if that was me sitting there, even though I probably wouldn't have wanted to do it, I probably would have got up and been like, nah, 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 nah. but I'm not going to let you have that dominant stance. But it is what the fuck it is. But what I'm saying is we are not. We are not going to sit here and go up for one and not the other. Okay, now I was here for A1 going to comfort him, like you know, that like I said, I mean, it is what it is, trying to you know, calm the man down. This and third, that shit was cool. Now, one thing that I, I wasn't here for is Ray saying we like the reason that he did it because he had something to lose, and you no know, rest of us we have to think before we act out. But it's just like you're talking about your brand, yeah, you try to throw a shoe at this dude, you're talking about your brand, <clears throat> but you are sitting here acting out at two events that you had to host that was attached to your PR company. Okay, so we have um, Nina asked Nikki like about the whole friendship thing, and instead of her just talking about it, she was like, "Well, you know, there's a lot of people who act like they're friends, but they're really not." Like when she like her not liking Lyrica and her meaning. Masika and those who just went at it and I'm gonna just leave it at that and a lot of people mad at Masika But it's just like you could have answered the question Without bringing somebody else into it, especially somebody that you've been into it with since season fucking one Moving on So we got triple B in them when I say triple B that's Brooke, Booby, Bridget and Marcus so Marcus did not see that final kiss but don't forget we did, but y'all also have to remember that when they shoot the reunion, it's sometimes three to four episodes, you know, before it wraps up. So, of course, he didn't see that because they had all they were filming the reunion before that aired. He felt a kind of way. <clears throat> Brooke had mentioned she had been abstinent, this, that, and third. You know, um, Keisha instigating talk about something that was a passionate kiss. A1 said that he feels that Keisha and Marcus should, you know, go ahead and do it to make things right. But we all know Keisha fucking with somebody, so she played around, but she not really entertained it. Um, let me see. Now, Brooke is overly confident in that poo -nah -nah, that she was like, all right, look, he just saw the kids, give it time, give him some liquor, he'll be all right. You know, she was just saying how, you know, the ring is ready if you want to propose. Like, all right, you coming off real thirsty, Brooke, coming off real thirsty. Um, Brooke and Bridget, they go at it with the whole Catalina thing, and you know, um, James like, hey man, I dodged the bullet, and it's just like, nah, nigga, you ain't dodged the bullet. If you dodged the bullet, you wouldn't have got cheated on multiple, multiple, multiple times. I mean, you know, come on, man. Um, let's see, Bridget talking about some why she didn't tell, um, Brooke about the whole studio session because of how it would look, but the fact that you didn't tell her, it looked way worse than if you would just fucking told her. And Bridget blames editing for a whole lot of shit. And even though you can, a lot of what we saw Bridget in, I mean, you really can't blame editing on that. Like, if you kiss the nigga, you kiss the nigga, you know. <clears throat> Cisco and Tierra. Um, Tierra, in general, felt that the behind the meeting, behind the back meetings were shady. But, of course, if you're trying to sit here and get the whole intervention thing going, got it. Now, Moniz mentioned how Nia was the one that kind of spearheaded it. And if y'all go back to the um, intervention, Tierra asked, asked for two people to leave, being uh, Nia and Fizz. So, right there, it was one of those where 
uh, that right there, I'm like, hmm, we need to need that for that. We really did, because it, it's some shit there, you know. <clears throat> but um, you had Cisco calling her fake con or some shit, some around there. You know, when these guys are mad, saying that the only reason that you're here is because, you know, you kept, you kicked off of New York, your ass is fired and whatnot. Now, AD is on stage while I'm on the East in the crowd now. AD, I, I understand you're a female. I, I understand. But you're going to sit there, and I'm not saying that I want AD to fight Cisco, but you're going to let that happen. And then Fizz has said in the back, I ain't even gonna jump in. That's what we got AD for. But regardless, bro, that's your baby mama. And we all know that Momo get into some shit. But I'm trying to figure out why didn't no other fucking dude on the cast get up and tell Cisco, hey, bro, you need to calm the fuck down. That is a lady. And then a lot of people, you know, mix about him <clears throat> trying to throw a pillow. But it's just like a nigga that is willing to sit here and throw a pillow is probably willing to sit here and hit a bitch. I mean, like, like, let's just be serious. And every time he's he cannot articulate himself, so he has to get physical. I'm telling you, I believe he put he, he hits women and shit. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Um, <laughs> so Cisco say that he and Nikki had something back in the day. She denies it, but it's just one of the where it's like I feel like there's something there, and there's it's something that wasn't explored. But I'm gonna leave where it's at. Tierra says that, you know, she's very cautious about, because I'm done with the whole Cisco thing now. No, I'm not. But she said this, um, <clears throat> she's cautious about what she drinks when she goes out. You know, if she's drinking water, she only drink that shit in the cup. She needs that shit in the bottle because of perception and how people want to sit here and spend things and how her and Masika fell out. It is what the fuck it is. <clears throat> Cisco says that he felt like Moniz got rid of um, Tierra. Because she was competition. And it's one of those, because he was like, because right afterwards, she was, you know, performing a song. This whole season was not about Moniz doing her music. Now, if it was, then I can kind of understand, like, okay, maybe I can see it. But definitely not the fucking case. And Moniz even said, like, if I want to sit here and take her out of the equation, <clears throat> why would I send her to a place that is going to do good to her, why not sit here and destroy it, bitch, which I'm just like, well, I can fucking understand that. <clears throat> so, moving on, we had Chanel. Why was she there? A1 and Lyrica, a, it was a temporary, you know, band for him to work with female artists. Now, he can work with female artists now that the D album is done. Side note, I'm halfway through the album. It, right now, I can just say, it's just a, a album that I can listen to. The only song that I can really say that I like is Unhealthy. But I feel like in terms of singing, it's like she either A, she's holding back vocally, but there's a lot of songs like even with uh, Unhealthy where she is hitting hot notes, but it's like they <clears throat> reduce the volume on it to not overshadow it. So I think it's just because they're trying to make the album commercial, but I haven't finished it. So that's all I'm going to say. Keisha Cole performed, and it was uh, shady as fuck <laughs> because they kept panning at Boo because obviously the song is about him, but that performance was not her best, and uh, she needs to focus more just on singing and uh, not dancing. If y'all don't believe me, uh, how about y'all watch Should've Let It Go video, and uh, that's about it. <clears throat> and it ends with Safari leaving. He's going to Love Hip Hop New York. Um... Yes, I will be reviewing it when I can get the videos out. If y'all don't know what I mean, check out the video of me talking about where I've been and the uh, <clears throat> where this channel is going to go in the next three weeks. So that's all I got. Uh, rate, comment, subscribe, and share. See you guys later.